I'm Bill Donahue. I'm here with Henry Cloud and John Townsend. Hi. And uh, we have been working with small groups, uh, I guess, for lots of years, and we're excited. Centuries, how long, how long centuries, Bill. Say, Millennia. Yeah. Really? Millennia. Yeah. I mean, since time began. It's unbelievable the amount of wisdom Henry has and age that John has. <laughs> hey. But hey, but but we love groups. We believe in groups. We love groups. We believe we're in them. We're glad that you're here. And we lead groups. And we're excited that you've decided to come together and use this material to help you maybe take a next step either as a new group or as an existing group that's trying to uh, become a better community together. Yeah, and it's going to be a different kind of DVD experience probably than you've ever had because we're going to hang out with you for the first four sessions or the next four and we're just going to help you walk through becoming a group because we think that becoming a group is a process and there's specific things that you can do that will help you do that. So we want to be kind of a partner, coach along the way and uh, guide you in the process and uh, let's get started. with. Tell us about the clip. Uh, the clip. They got a video I'm going to yeah, see. We're going to show you a yeah. video clip with some people talking about their experience with small groups and their experience with relationships and their desire and hunger for community or maybe some of the challenges they faced when they said, you know, I want to connect and I want to grow, but for some reason it's not working yeah. or I hit a Just wall. like you might have the same kind of questions or thoughts or Absolutely. feelings. Absolutely. Yeah. So see if you can identify with any of these comments. And we'll be back in a few minutes. I um, believe in small group life to the core of who I am. It has changed my life. Small group's an opportunity for us to connect in the kind of relationship that in our culture doesn't experience as much anymore and gives an opportunity to be real intentional about growing in our walk with God. The other benefit of it is being able to ask those questions that you wouldn't typically ask about God in a larger setting. Like uh, I hear a good message, it's challenging, it's thought provoking. It's not really the time for me to like raise my hand and go, I have a question. But when it comes to a group, it, it gives me a chance to, to hear what God's doing in other people's lives. It's a way of sharing and getting feedback as opposed to being on an island uh, by yourself. Part of um, being in a small group means that it's gonna get messy relationally. I think because people are people and they all have different personalities and, and different quirks. One of the challenges that I've experienced a number of times is with commitment. You have people who say they want to be a part of the group and they even express expectations of what they want to get out of it and yet don't put the time or commitment into participating. One of the young women in the group started to really share deeply out of her life and started to open up in ways that really amazed me because it was such a deeper place than she'd ever been willing to go before. And I watched the group immediately jump in and start trying to tell her what to do and giving her advice and fixing things. And I watched her heart open and shut. It just, she shut down. I'm remembering one couple who dominated the conversation regularly. The quieter people weren't going to speak unless they were given the opportunity to or somebody asked them a question. As time went on, it got more and more challenging um, to the point where people, especially the quiet people, stopped showing up um, for the group because it wasn't really meeting their needs. They weren't getting the chance to share what was going on in their lives or even participate in the discussion. Small group life can be messy. What we hope to do is navigate through the messiness well together and I think that's what God uses. Where I see people grow is when you know, there's those relational tensions or conflict or where we have those tough conversations or when uh, we hit a point where we do want to move in different directions and we navigate that together. Um, knowing that there are people there for me uh, that I can go to, uh, whatever the case may be, is just so reassuring uh, in life and in my walk with Christ. There are people in our lives that um, trusted us, believed in us, provided for us. I can remember there were times when we were so dirt poor um, it was a group that came around us and bought us a refrigerator, gave us food. Um, they were at the hospital when um, our children were born. I can remember never receiving a doctor bill one year um, when one of our sons was born. There was a, a leader in my life that would get up and pray for our family at 4 o'clock in the morning um, for a whole year. That was his commitment to us. There was one group that taught us um, how to pray together as a family, and we still have the basket today a prayer request, um, rocks in a, a basket, and on the lid of the basket when you open it up, there's all the prayer requests and when they were answered. And when I think of my son praying for a tricycle and God providing that through that small group, um, 
it's just life changing. Well, you can see from those clips that groups can either tap into a lot of hopes that get disappointed mm -hmm. or have some amazing kinds of things that happen in people's yeah, lives. Yeah, absolutely. It's really powerful. Or people get afraid of some things and have some nightmare experiences, so it's kind of all across the board. Right. right but groups can really change people's lives, and that's the exciting thing about this. When you really do come together in a kind of the sense of community that God's created us for, mm -hmm. uh, it can shape us. Mm -hmm. We were created for community. And you know, a lot of times when you think about going to church and reading the Bible and studying the Bible, if you look at the New Testament, for example, so like some huge percentage of all the verses in there, if you just counted them, you can't even do them on Sunday morning. You yeah, know, they like, require something Exactly. Else, they yeah. require a context like a small group to do. Yeah, it's kind of like a in church, all the chairs are facing forward. Right, right. In your small group, we're all facing each other. So we're eyeball to eyeball. Yeah, if you just pick one verse, like James 5.16 says, confess your faults to one another. That's a long How list. do you do that on Sunday morning? You in can't. a safe place. Yeah, yeah you got to get in a small I mean, group. What do you do? So. Say, let's go down the hall and do that to each other right now. I mean, I'd be like, whoa, wait right. a minute. Well, so that's you why. You do a public kind well, of. Well, we want you to confess your faults to everybody. We have time. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, there's only two. So, uh, denial and what else? Uh, knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, we really do need each other. Pray for one another, encourage one another, exhort one another, grieve with one another. Mm. You know, I mean, the Bible's got 25 or, or more of these expressions that require a community to be together. And that's why we're excited about you're becoming that kind of community that can share your lives and help grow each other and teach each other and comfort each other. And it's going to be a great experience. So now we've got your first activity um, of this whole series. And it's going to be a very basic, easy one to do. We want you to just go around, share your name if you don't know names. If you do know names, you don't have to now, do that. they've been meeting for a year and they don't know names, could, is that an issue? Could be a problem. That's, yeah. a, that's a problem group. Yeah. Okay. But Should they call you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Call yeah. Henry if you've been meeting for a year and you don't know each other's names. Yeah. What we're going to do now, though, is, is when you do that, we want you just to share what your responses were to those interviews and like what you resonated with, what yeah. made sense, what kind of things do you long for and want to see in group. And so it's going to take you, what, maybe 10 maybe minutes 10 or minutes. so? Yeah. Kind of brief. About 10 minutes and come back. Okay. We'll see, see you on the other side.